Hey guys, we're at the halfway point of the year, so we thought we'd have a look at what's happening on the Early Access front. In this report, we're going to take a look at six popular Early Access titles and see how they're going. To do this, we're using a grading system. Last time we used bananas, but this time, we're going to use traffic lights. Green obviously means go. The game is a known quantity, very playable, and a purchase is warranted. Yellow means that the game has shown promise, but it's still being significantly modified, so slow, slow down on that one. Red signals stop. So, uh... <laughs> Red signals stop. This game could be great in time, but for the time being should be avoided. If you like this video and you want us to do a part 2, show us by hitting the like button and telling us in the comments. Cue the intro. Darkest Dungeon is incredibly polished. The gothic art style perfectly fits the Lovecraftian setting, the gripping cutscenes bolster the narrative, and the Dark Souls-esque level of difficulty ensures the brutality is relentless. The squad building is similar to that in XCOM, but with greater potential for emotional connections and the updates have been constant and full of content. Overall, Darkest Dungeon has avoided any of the disappointment that usually plagues early access titles and is one of the best games we've played in 2015 early access or not. There are a lot of survival games on Steam early access, but the long dark stands out with its painterly art and realism. Trekking through the snow-coated wilderness is unforgivable, and pottering along may fail to uncover even a glimmer of hope. Even more than being a game of survival, The Long Dark provides us very poignant and thoughtful experiences you explore. Still, the game is only an alpha and limited to a sandbox mode. The yet to be added episodic mode that will bring context and purpose to the game will also be the make or break factor. Without the full picture yet, we're being a little wary in giving The Long Dark the amber light. With its release cleverly coinciding with the release of Jurassic World, Ark Survival Evolved has taken dinosaurs to a level of hype not seen since prehistoric times. Taming dinosaurs and effectively making them your rideable pets and or weapons in a large open world is a spectacular premise. Better yet, in its execution of a large and growing list of dinos, high-end graphics and tough environmental conditions, Ark has shown that it can reach its promise. However, one significant issue has popped up. Players frequently getting griefed when offline. This has essentially prevented any progress in online play being saved and countless of hours of play amounting to nothing. At this stage, Ark presents a fun prehistoric playground to tinker in, but its griefing issues disincentivizes what should be its jewel in online play. Proceed with caution. Stranded Deep Reminds of the Forest, another survival game in early access, only to set in a water-abundant tropical nowhere. Much like the forest, the graphics are beyond stunning and some of the best in gaming. But also like the forest, Stranded Deep struggles for a lack of, pardon the pun, depth. Shark encounters are truly thrilling, but there are few other animals and without the variety, sharks become expected and mundane. The same can be said of hunting, building and crafting, and the result is that after a few playthroughs, the game becomes unsurprising and repetitive. There are updates planned to add more content and multiplayer, but as it is now, Stranded Deep is still... <clears throat> stranded in its own shallow waters. Vital signs stabilizing. Subnautica is another, but what we promise will be the last survival sandbox game in this video. 
It may be a lazy comparison to make, but the game plays out a lot like Minecraft. The nighttime is extra dangerous, you can craft a heap of items and you can build bases, just they're underwater and comprised of sci-fi tech. A lot of the best items, such as the honorary gravity gun and submarine have been added in consistent updates that continue to push the game further. The alien ocean is packed with fantastically weird creatures and biomes, and no matter how transparent its water may look, there are no invisible walls to be found in its endlessness. Pop on your diver's mask and there's exploration and adventure to be had in Subnautica. Good to go. From day one of its early access, Armello was being highly functional. Digitizing a board game, and in the process removing the drag of calculating buffs and damage, makes for an inviting and casual experience. This is then topped off with a wonderful cast of fighting anthropomorphic animals that could very easily have been plucked out of Brian Jux's imagination. There is a deeper level of tactics going on, and the early access is designed to refine them, and in particular develop the mid to late game. With a reliable track record of big monthly updates and extra funding recently being secured from the Indie Fund, Amalu is a safe proposition. We're going to say to be hesitant with this one, as there is more work to be done such as doubling the play hero count and the price tag of $25 is a little steep. Thanks for watching. My name's Lawrence. And my name's Josh. We'll see you next time here on Indie Former. This games and how they're going this year. Hey. <laughs> Hey! Hey! Uh, hey! 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 God! <laughs> Slow down! <laughs> We're doing good! We're doing good! That was good! I uh, was doing pretty good. Slow down on that. Yellow means that the game is showing promise and it's still being. But. Uh, oh. Ooh, ooh, okay. Uh, so, avoid this one for the time being. Even if it could. Oh! <laughs> Red signal stop. This game could be great in time, but as is, should we avoid. Oh no! Oh, he's got it. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs>